Good day, my name is Blue Suit, and today I'll be going over my review of the 4X Grand Strategy Lineage and Kingdom Management Simulator known as Old World. In Old World, you take command of seven ancient nations from Greece, Egypt, Persia, Carthage, Babylonia, and Assyria as they vie for the mantle of greatness in good old Grand Strategy Conquests. Upon first glance, Old World looks like a clone of the Civilization games, and I'd be lying if I said there wasn't some distinct design overlap between the two games. This is due to the fact that Old World was created by Soren Johnson, who is also the mind behind Civ 4, one of the series' best. Beyond the superficial, however, Old World does a lot to distinguish itself as a unique experience by adding a ton of fresh ideas and mechanics, as well as introducing a lineage system similar to what fans of the genre have seen from Crusader Kings. This combination of great ideas makes Old World one of the best, possibly the best, in the genre, but it will take some getting used to for those expecting a Civ knockoff. In Old World, each turn that passes is one year, and focuses specifically on the Middle East and Mediterranean during the Iron Age, so don't expect to play as Abraham Lincoln inventing the wheel and carrying your people through to a space launch. As each turn is an entire year, it really feels harmful if you're just mindlessly passing through turns, waiting on a new technology or construction project, because there's so much to do each turn, dictated by your number of orders. Every year you only have so many orders that you can issue, a number which grows over the course of a game. Each of your units also have a set number of actions they can take as well, so when you're managing a huge kingdom or waging a large scale war, there are only so many actions you can take that year. There are several ways that you can increase your number of available orders, but mostly it's through your legitimacy score, which goes up any time you do something that convinces people that you are the rightful king, like discovering natural wonders or making the right decisions during the events that pop up for you to deal with. There are over 3,000 different events in the game that you'll need to address, ranging from angry foreign leaders to cheating spouses. Each one will have an immediate impact on your kingdom, and some will even have lasting impacts that can rear their heads later in the game. I once paid one of my heads of houses to stop a war, but I wasn't allowed to ask any questions. Several years after agreeing, I learned that he'd taken an infant hostage from my enemy and it caused a tribal invasion that killed many of my people. These tribes are like smaller, non-playable nations that you can generally use to your benefit if you're on good terms, and honestly, if my leader had been more charismatic, the baby snatching could have worked out in my favor. One of the biggest systems in the game is how you manage your court. As you progress through a match, your court will grow. Notables will want to join, they will have babies, people will get married, and before you know it, you'll have a full roster of diplomats, spy masters, governors, and even wives. Keeping them all happy isn't necessary, but as you play, you'll realize there are some that you absolutely must keep happy. Your top priority is probably a religious leader. Religion is a big deal when it comes to keeping your people happy, and whether you follow a local paganism or a larger world religion, if you're in good with that leader, then all the followers will like you more. Your second priority will be to your significant other. If you aren't able to make babies and secure your lineage, then the game is over when you die. Each turn being a year definitely puts the pressure on as well, because as time passes, the character portraits actually age, and you can quickly run out of time if you're too focused on kingdom management. Finally, there's your heads of house, which are also important to keep happy. Each of the seven factions all have four different houses within them that specialize in one aspect of your kingdom. Some families are more cultured, or militaristic, or frugal, and deciding which one gets more of your loyalty and attention will sway the overall strengths of your kingdom. If you're able to get in good with the leaders of these houses though, every other member of it will follow suit. And if you're unable to properly manage these relationships, it could lead to less productivity, rebellion, or even an assassination. There are a few other notable things that I'd like to bring up before getting into Old World's few downsides, and the first is in its tech tree. Surely not the largest that we've seen, but how you learn new tech is definitely different. After you learn a technology and it's time to pick something new, you can't just start researching anything that's available. Instead, you have to select from four technologies that are randomly selected from the pool of available ones. This makes it much harder to just race to a technology that you prefer, because even when you've unlocked that ability to research it, it's up to RNG on whether or not you actually can. Additionally, you'll often be presented with boost research as well that I like. This can give you a one-time bonus like extra resources or free troops, but doesn't progress your tech tree. I'm not a huge fan of RNG being a part of the tech tree, but overall the system certainly adds a lot more involvement than what fans of the genre are used to. 
The other great thing that I really loved was all the quality of life additions that exist all over Old World. There are tooltips within tooltips helping you understand every little bit of information. You can actually undo your last move if you make a mistake. You can rename every town and court member, and there's a great encyclopedia and user manual that's chock full of helpful information. There are a few issues with Old World though that could be a turn off for some players. These aren't deal breakers for me personally, but they could be for you. And the first is the learning curve. Old World's tutorial honestly felt like a college class and it takes several hours to get all the way through. If you're a fan of the genre and you're worried that this won't have the depth of some of your other favorite games, worry no longer. There's a massive amount of information to learn between the kingdom and court management sides of the house, and it can really take a long time before you're running circles around your enemies. Additionally, the encyclopedia, while helpful, would be greatly improved by adding some historical context to its entries. One of the big draws of civilization for me was that by playing as a nation, you actually learn a lot about their history. But that aspect doesn't really show its head here, and it feels like a missed opportunity. The last downside that deserves a mention is the combat. One issue that Civ games have always had is how late game combat devolves into a slog. And that's no different here. There are loads of different ways to win a match and animations have been sped up. But if you're planning a military victory, the end of the game definitely slows way down. You can pick up Old World right now on Epic Games Store or when it launches on Steam on May 19th, 2022 for 40 bucks. And it's honestly worth even more than that. It does have a very steep learning curve with lots of reading and involved decision making, but honestly that's what most fans of the genre are probably looking forward to most anyway. Combining elements of civilization with Crusader Kings has paid off wonderfully, so I'm valuing Old World at $44 and I highly recommend it to fans of the genre who are looking for another great 4x game to lose themselves in. I hope you enjoyed this review of Old World. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time.